Okay, so awards, more awards for mid-career women. So the next award that we're going to um, give out is for business. I love this one. I loved all of them, but I love this one. And Deb Frodel is going to um, introduce and give this award. And let me just give a quick introduction to one of our other fabulous ambassadors. Uh, Deb is the uh, Global Executive Director for Ecoimagination for GE. And she just won the uh, Green Building and Design uh, 2017 Women in S Sustainability Leadership Award. So I'm just going to steal a little bit of the text from what they wrote about her. From making it easier to adopt electrical vehicles to helping one of the biggest companies reduce its carbon emissions worldwide, Deb Frodel is at the forefront of good business. For nearly 30 years with GE, she has taken on roles like Chief Strategy Officer for GE Capital Fleet Services, Global Alternative Fuels Leader, and her current role leading GE Ecomagination, working to accelerate innovation and growth through clean technology solutions. I have always brought sustainability, change, and giving back to support other women into my work. Come on, Deb. Good morning. I am so honored to be here and honored to be a C3E ambassador um, for the last few years. It is such a privilege to work with colleague ambassadors, beautiful network. We see a pipeline of women coming through every year that are changing the world. And I just want to congratulate all of the remarkable women being recognized yesterday and today. It's because of your great work that we are having a more clean, prosperous future, but we are also in that process inspiring girls and women um, as well. So thank you. Um, be very proud of that. Um, it is impactful. So with that, I do have the distinct honor of recognizing one of those very remarkable women for her leadership in clean energy. Please join me in congratulating Leslie Marshall, the C3E business category winner this year. Leslie is an amazing leader who has made a significant impact. Her major accomplishments in clean energy were establishing and growing focus on energy efficiency at General Mills, uh, Murfrees Boro plant in Tennessee. What I'm so impressed with with Leslie's, what I'm so impressed with is Leslie has exemplified true leadership. She took a grassroots approach to solve a challenge. It wasn't a, a mandate from the top, but it was her passion, her focus, that substantially resulted in a significant impact for the company. Leslie started looking at efficiency at the plant. She found that much of the opportunity in reducing energy consumption could involve operating more efficiently, better utilizing equipment that already existed. After discovering this, she executed on several important actions. She designed and implemented the program that reused packaging materials instead of recycling them, which saved the plants hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. She established and met goals to reduce the plant's $10 million annual energy budget. She all, and she saved a million dollars in doing that annually. She changed the focus from really hunting on the big gorilla in the factory, uh, like refrigeration, to what is an ROI. How do I get the teams to start to focus on the return on investment? A big behavioral shift. She increased the efficiency of air compressor operations, designed and implemented insulation, heat recovery, waste conservation projects. Leslie's leadership transformed the corporate culture at General Mills, and it was recognized by company executives. Demonstrating this type of leadership earned her a promotion, and now General Mill, she is now General Mills' global energy strategy and provides plants and resources plant and resources to meet their energy and CO2 emissions reductions. As many of you know, driving cultural change is not easy. 
But Leslie's success, um, she, she approached it with new types of metrics that people were able to respond to. One, documenting cost savings. Two, identifying measures that prevented equipment problems. And three, reward and recognition uh, from leadership to those employees. She truly changed the game. Leslie's an inspiration and a leader to watch in clean energy. Please join me in congratulating Leslie Marshall. Thank you, Deb, for that wonderful introduction. And congratulations on your 2017 Women in Sustainability Leadership Award. Thank you, C3E, C3E Ambassadors, MIT, Stanford, for arranging this program and providing a forum to recognize women in our role in clean energy and sustainability. It is an honor to be among all of you who are the driving force of implementing clean energy practices and policies. It is my hope that I can inspire other women to enter our exciting field the same way you've done for me. General Mills has a special interest in clean energy and sustainability because of the impact it has on climate change. Climate change has serious long-term effects on how we are able to conduct businesses, business and whether we can do that competitively. We all know that severe weather effects have tragic consequences for all living beings. But from a business standpoint, it decreases our ability to reliably access raw materials and it impacts delivery of ingredients and finished goods throughout our, throughout our supply chain. Because of this, we feel it is crucial that we are aggressive in our approach to minimize our contribution to the problem. At the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Global Carbon Project released figures that showed industrial em emissions of carbon dioxide are on track to increase for the first time in three years. As a society, we need to continue to demand that sources of energy are clean and sustainable, but we should also reduce energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions by eliminating unnecessary tasks entirely that use energy and ensuring that our usage of it is the most efficient, cost-effective method available. Businesses and individuals alike need to be very conscious of how energy is used on a day-to-day -day basis. Energy efficiency must become institutionalized in our thought processes and prioritized the same way we do human safety food safety, delivery of innovative products, and profitability. In order to continue a downward trend of greenhouse gas emissions, we must never relent. We must persist. Energy reduction is driven by very passionate individuals in our company. We're implementing amazing projects that deliver cost savings to the General Mills, but it is often without recognition. I'm accepting this award not just for myself, but on behalf of the utility and facility teams at our manufacturing sites in 15 different countries. We will be responsible for delivering a significant portion of, this, of the commitment General Mills has made to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 28% by the year 2025 across our entire value chain from farmhouse to table. I'd like to thank Carter Wall for nominating me for the award. And I'd also like to thank my previous manager, Darren Kaiser, who was able to reconcile my personal passion for energy efficiency with my career path. When I initially approached him with interest for the job, I had no idea of the world that would be open to me. The continued inspiration that I would obtain through meeting and collaborating with brilliant and dedicated individuals. I'd like to thank my current manager, Jenny Wright, and my colleagues, Michael Sims, and here in Sardhara, on the frequent collaborations on maneuvering the challenges that often present themselves as we implement our global energy strategy. Thank you, Jerry Lynch, the Vice President of Sustainability for General Mills, and his team, Jeff Hanratty and Diane Corelli, 
for keeping our sustainability goals in the forefront of what we promise to deliver to society. Finally, thank you to my friends and family for your support of me and my career, and to my partner, Laura, who listens to my constant talking about energy efficiency and makes sure that we continue to incorporate sustainable practices in our everyday lives. Thank you. That inspiring. I love. I love this part. Okay. Um, now we'll have the award on um, for advocacy, and Ellen Morris is going to introduce that, and I'm going to introduce Ellen. Um, Ellen uh, teaches uh, energy and enterprise development at Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs, and is a faculty affiliate at the Center on Global Energy Policy. Um, at Columbia, she serves as a mentor um, in the Women's International Leadership Program, and she's the faculty advisor for the Women in Energy Student Group. Um, our ambassadors are very busy. Um, in addition to her faculty appointment, Ellen is the president and founder of Sustainable Energy Solutions, which is an international consulting company that um, uses the... Uh, that uses the increase um, of clean energy technologies to support economic development and reduce poverty in developing countries. Um, Ellen? Good morning, and thank you for having me. Uh, serving as a C3E ambassador for the last several years has really been uh, such a pleasure, and it, the, the cadre of ambassadors who I work with uh, continually impress me, as do the people, the young people, the rising stars, the seasoned veterans who are in the audience and around the world thinking about uh, how to enter the workforce in the energy sector and how to improve the world. So, uh, so I'm really happy to be here today to present um, the C3E 2017 Award for Advocacy to Anna Bautista, and she's recognized for her leadership and extraordinary achievements uh, in advocacy and driving greater uptake of clean energy technologies and in society. Anna is the Vice President of Construction and Workforce Development for Grid Alternatives, and Grid Alternatives is a prominent nonprofit organization making clean energy and job training accessible to underserved communities. Uh, it, is one of the, it is the largest nonprofit solar installer in the world. It was started in California. It's now working across the US as well as internationally in places like Nepal, Nicaragua, Mexico, as well as in tribal communities here in the US. And when I got to know Anna through the process of her nomination, as well as in, in meeting her here for the first time, what really struck me are three things um, which just uh, create this extraordinary picture of this person who will be honored today. Her technical skills, she brings with her a very solid technical training and um, very uh, good skills on design, implementation and operation of solar systems with a degree uh, from MIT in electrical engineering uh, in a, obviously a, a male-dominated uh, study, I'm sure, um, and bringing that technical expertise and that solid grounding uh, with a degree in electrical engineering to really practical applications to really improve uh, the lives of people um, and underprivileged people. She also brings an extreme uh, sense of humility and empathy to the work that she does. And she is uh, working, as I said, in underserved communities. And in also, uh, in addition to that, she also is influencing change in her own organization, Grid Alternatives, and working on things like um, workforce development, leadership skills of the staff who are part of Grid Alternatives, which has grown in her time from when she joined of 12 people to now it's about 157 people. So Grid Alternatives is really poised 
um, and is growing and really serving as an example for, for the rest of the world of how to, to make solar affordable and accessible to, to the uh, uh, world at large. In addition, she's a focused and tireless leader in what she does. She leads by example. She brings her work, her, her ethic, to uh, everything she does at Grid Alternatives and um, in all of her, her work. She's known as a teacher, a mentor, a speaker, especially focused on women. And notably, she was very instrumental in building up and increasing the Women in Solar initiative that was part of a core offering, um, creating women build only, women as installers, in uh, grid alternatives operations. So Anna is pushing grid alternatives in new directions with all of the aspects of social, racial, and gender equity, and really embodies what this award is about, which is, as I said, leadership and extraordinary achievements. Um, so it was really my pleasure to be able to, to give this award to Anna, and she is going to use this award to give back to Grid Alternatives in a very unique way, focused on the first tribal program women's build to install and maintain solar systems in the Navajo Nation. And I think that is a really wonderful way to celebrate what C3E is about, all about, forging into new directions, focused on women, women's empowerment as an installer, as a technical person, but also as uh, a person who is, for the first time, going to be receiving clean energy. So please join me in uh, celebrating this award with Anna Bautista, the 2017 C3E Award winner for advocacy. Oh wow, thank you Ellen for that very kind introduction. Um, and thank you C3E for this recognition for myself and for Grid Alternatives. And also for allowing me to invite two of my sisters from the field, uh, Amaris Lujano and Tia Sam over there at that table. Uh, <laughs> Amaris is one of our newer install supervisors. She finished at the top of her pre-apprenticeship program, and now she's studying to be an electrical engineer. And Tia Sam, um, she recently graduated from high school. She found us through our Solar Futures program, and now wants to inspire and motivate other young people. So if you haven't connected with them today, please do so um, at some point. Uh, Amaris and Tia are two of the women who have been served by this work, and with this award, we'll continue to expand our efforts. I also want to thank Teresa Zhang, Carol Weiss, Kristen Graff, and Erica Mackey, my nominators, mentors, and sponsors. Um, these are the type of women whose lights are so bright, reflecting back at me like mirrors, reminding me to see my own light. And finally, I want to thank my cheering squad and support system, both on the live stream and at this whole back table over here, especially my parents whose sacrifices as first-generation Filipino-American immigrants coming here on a nursing visa and, and enlisting in the U.S. Navy have allowed me access to formal education and to be in this room today. Uh, despite all the support I received, uh, unfortunately not everyone was always so encouraging. My own high school guidance counselor told me I got into MIT because I was a token woman of color. Uh, luckily, I grew up uh, with a strong Filipina identity, finding community and home with other displaced people, proud of the resiliency that flows in my blood. But that negative brain chatter would creep in. You're an imposter. You are not enough. You don't deserve to be here. I'm so thankful for this affirming space that reminds us all that we can't hate our way into loving ourselves. Uh, so it feels pretty special to be here receiving this award at MIT today. It really feels full circle. I really struggled my senior year, actually. 9-11 um, happened. We were going into Iraq. It felt like only military contractors were hiring. I was a really angry student organizer. I was depressed. I learned to my disappointment that there's no such thing as a pain-free life. Life is a struggle. But you have to find the things that are worth struggling for. However, you can't think your way to clarity on this. You need to show up, and you need to act. That year, I found an active outlet as a student in Amy Smith's uh, D-Lab class to Haiti. 
The D stands for development through dialogue, design, and dissemination. Haiti is majority deforested, and I witnessed that when the environment is at its worst, it affects all layers of public health. Runoff affecting water quality, soil health, food supply. I also learned the importance of developing local capacity. The effectiveness of hands-on relevant classrooms in the field where community members can see themselves as builders, engineers, problem solvers, innovators. After I graduated, I went to the Philippines, my family's homeland, on an environmental justice tour, learning from the frontline communities themselves who are living and working in mines, oil depots, landfills, toxic factories, communities who pay the externalized cost of all of our stuff. These communities are extremely organized, and it was further reinforced that no one can fix our complex problems alone, and no one wants to be saved. People want the power and the resources to change their own lives. And I want to shout out the comment from yesterday. People also want systems of accountability, and that's important, too. I returned to, the U or returned to the U.S. wanting to combine my new interest in environment and environmental justice with my electrical engineering background, inspired to change our energy infrastructure in a way that benefits local communities that matter the most to me. Americans were only 5% of the world's population, but we consume 25% of the world's energy. I wanted to use my privilege, my privilege and access living here in the belly of the beast to build alternatives, especially these days when it feels like there are so many things to fight, resist, dismantle, and protect. We need to remember that we also need to dream and to create. At Grid Alternatives, we built a 39 megawatt distributed generation power plant on the rooftops and neighborhoods of 9,500 low-income families and underserved communities. And we have a goal of building another 15 megawatts this coming year. We've built that with a model influenced by the values that I've gained on my travels, community-based training, partnership, distributed leadership, where the folks who are most impacted can influence, influence decision-making. Uh, and as we discussed these last few days, providing reliable, affordable, clean energy, this is hard work. As someone on the technical side, as an energy access practitioner running a solar construction company, I wish it was only a technical problem to solve. But we're people, we're imperfect, we're complex, we're complicated. We need to have those courageous conversations in order to change hearts and minds and behaviors. And if we want a transition to a regenerative, clean energy economy that includes and benefits everyone, if we want to live our lives in a way that is life-giving to future generations, the process, the how we get there, has to be equitable and just, or the outcomes will not be equitable and just. Solar is not the answer to everything, but at GRID, we're using it as a tool, not only for affordable housing, development, and career pathways, but also as a tool for energy so sovereignty in Indian country, to provide second chances for those who are impacted by the justice system, and to, bu and to build collaborative communities across borders. This celebration gives me appreciation for how far we've come, and I hope you keep showing up with me for the work that we have left to do. Thank you so much. Wow, okay, so I guess that this morning is really a reminder about how much this is not about us giving to these amazing women, but it's also what they're giving to us. And I guess I would just also add that it is, and I know I'm, the other ambassador showed us, it's an incredibly humbling experience to go through all the applications who come, they are just all of them amazing um, that make their way to us and then we make these tough decisions, but we're so proud of all of these awardees. And on that note, we're taking a break, and please be back at 10.15, but again, the posters await you.